this is an introductory video into the C500 Mark II where we'll also be going through an overview and also the menu structure and in-depth into um, connectivity and how the menus are laid out and a lot of, about the camera itself and how it could serve as a great B cam to the C700 with some uh, mash cut test footage in the cuts between um, the C700 and the C500 Mark II so you can see practical world scenarios. Taking a look at the camera, you could see the buttons still remain the same following the Canon's format that they've employed in the C300 and most similar to the C200 though. Although they altered the fan intake that was in the C200 right side, that used to actually be very disturbing if you're on the shoulder rig. Both the inlet and the outlets are now on the other side of the camera if you see, if when you get to like see the camera. And this, the C500 Mark II actually now comes the ability to actually change the mount just like you could find in the red. So you could switch to a PL mount, or you could switch to an EF mount. So you actually open up the world of possibility and lenses. With the dual card slots that are actually available on the camera and the back modules that actually make it possible to fit other modules into the camera. On the back side of the camera, you could take off and install different modules. Also, um, BP60 batteries that actually can help out the camera when it's actually recording raw. The camera has two available slots when recording and you, you also have a bunch of in and out ports like the monitor out, the SDI out, time codes, remote for recording remotely, mics and headphones and two XLRs which makes the camera on the basic package is ready to shoot literally out of the box. Just slap in any lens you have on it and up you go. So we, we changed from the EF mount to the PL mount to be able to like try out the same reason when we did the same test. If you've not seen the video, please go check the link, uh, check our channel for the video where we'll compare the cine lens versus the summary glass and it was amazing there. Um, so this opened up a world of possibilities after um, putting on the PL mount because you could literally put a cook there, you could put um, an anamorphic glass in there, it has the anamorphic mode to the squeeze and you could actually, now there's now a single cable rather than double cable in the previous 500 Mark II, there's now a single cable that actually takes both the video signal directly to the monitor and the audio has been removed from the top of the monitor and back into the back of the camera. So you can see how very compact it is and you could actually move, it's almost as small as the C200 but has the firepower that calls um, the C700 in the capabilities. So gimbal application and all that, you could strip this camera to the bare bone and you could actually put it on, on, on a running S with one of your steel glass and that's a possibility. So Canon has updated the C500 Mark II's menu structure. It's not looking like the C300 Mark II, but it's now more looking closely to the C200. On the camera tab, this page has seven tabs whereby we have iris, ND, shutter, auto white balance, grip zoom mode, ABB which is auto black balance that's great for actually um, reducing noise sensor, color bars and any and the new digital image stabilization that was also added in this first camera tab. The second tab is for custom pictures where you can load and create your own custom pictures. On the recording and media setup tab, with the four tabs you can initialize the media, set the sensor, record formats, slow and fast motion which you could also access with a quick button on the camera's body and you could also set pre-recording settings, change your resolutions and color sampling when you're asking XAVC as opposed to RAW and there's, a, there's something you should know about RAW, when recording in RAW you can't go below 800 ISO, you can only stop at 800 ISO but in XAVC you can come down to 400 ISO. So it has also recording modes for like double slot recording or relay recording and you could also set the camera metadata. The audio tab allows you to do all, um, all your audio setups within uh, five tabs whereby you can configure more channels and um, configure them into the manner that works for you. On the monitor setup tab, we have 12 tabs that have um, functions that allows you to control the viewfinder, the LCD, anamorphic disk squeeze and the output and on-screen display settings. Also on this tab, that's where you can load your own custom lots and also apply the lots that are actually pre-available in the camera. On the assistance function tab, you have 10 tabs where you can access and tweak settings for the picking, magnification, force color, which is one of the amazing tools of this camera, which you could remap into an easy to get button on the on front side of the camera. I usually change that from my zebra to force color. And we also have the zebra settings away from vector scope and markers that, allow, that could serve as frame guides. The next one second has two tabs for connecting. Assignable buttons as the name goes, is, this is where you could actually change custom functions of the initial button to something new. And on the system settings, you could actually go there and program date, time, output resolution, gen log, time code, dial your settings, um, key lock, tally, fan, and all the warnings that you would like um, to actually program there. And this is where you could also save your um, camera settings. If you have multiple C500s, you could easily 
um, program one and just take an SD card, load it into the SD card and go use the program all. On the menu setting, this is where you load, you can actually customize things you get to quickly and you load your settings. So if you actually come into the camera and dig into the system, just go into my menu and all the regular settings you actually used before, you could actually access it. We actually use the C500 as a B cam to the C700 in um, some of the demo clips we put together to see how it can serve as a great B cam. So I hope you do like this video and I hope it was useful to you. If it was useful to you, please subscribe and leave a comment below on what you think as the C500 against the B-Camp against um, the C700. If you could watch the footage and you could pick point which is the C500 and which is the C700, that'd be a great thing to do though. But both of them were actually shot in the MXF codec for it to be similar because in the C700, I didn't have the codec so I couldn't record RAW and compare both RAWs together as in, but we could actually shoot MXF together. So tell me what you think about the film, what you think about um, the video that was cut together and see if there's any obvious difference and how you think this camera could fit into your workflow. Until next time, improvise, adapt, overcome, and don't forget to subscribe.